Third John, chapter number, well, there's only one chapter there, chapter number one, but verse number two, a verse that you're familiar with, and uh, in verse number two, it said, Beloved, I wish, some translations say, desire, others pray, so forth and so on, above all things, uh, the, the Greek actually says, above all things, in all things, and through all things. It could be translated either way. Above all things, through all things, and in all things, regardless of circumstances, in other words, that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Hallelujah. 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 Say that out loud. That's God's desire for me. me. That desire didn't originate with you, did it? Sometimes people say, well, I don't want to be carnal. I don't want to, you know, this desire for, for increase and so forth. I don't want to be carnal. That desire originated in God's heart for you. That didn't originate with you. Amen. It originated in God. And it came from God into you. Now, there's, there's inordinate affections the Bible talks about. There's, there's the abuse of things. But, but, but we're going to look at this tonight. Uh, and notice what he says here in verse number 3. For, notice he connects what he just said to verse number 3. For, not done talking, I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no, verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Amen. 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 How did he, notice he said, you'll prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Yeah. Notice how his soul was prospering. Yeah. The truth had gotten into him. The truth had gotten into him. That's why this message needs to be preached because it's the truth. If, if, if it's something that uh, you know, Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. I have talked to people and I, understand, I have compassion on these people. I was there at one time, so I have an understanding heart and so forth. I don't want to you know, hinder them by you know, just you know, telling them they're weird or something like that. But... Uh, but they, I've heard people say, well, that just, when people, ministers minister on that subject, just bothers me. I'm nervous. And I said, well, I understand that. I've been yeah. there. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, but see, that's bondage. That's not freedom. Come on. That's bondage. So that reveals that you need more truth in that area because God wants you free from that as well as free from the struggle financially because it's the truth that makes you free. And uh, the people that uh, preached it, whether it bothered me or not, were the people that loved me enough to not leave me where I was. And I'm so thankful for that message. Now, we understand that there's abuse of this message, that, uh, not, not the truth. You know, you can, you can uh, preach the truth and then you can preach extra things beyond the truth. There's, there's covetousness. There's all kinds of We understand all that. But listen, I'm not going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. It's because the bathwater is dirty doesn't mean that the, the message is, the truth is dirty. The, the real truth of prosperity is pure. It's holy. It's not defiled. It's not a message of covetousness. It's a message of freedom. It's a message of redemption. I, I have discovered the Lord uh, bringing us into some things has made me love him more because it shows me his love for me. Praise the Lord. And sometimes people struggle in this area, but we're, we're afraid, maybe uh, preachers, I should say in general, are afraid to talk about this because they think, well, you know, somebody might get offended. Well, yeah, the devil will get offended. <laughs> yeah. So um, notice verse 3. He said, this, this, uh, your soul prospering. Well, verse 2, the, the, the key to prosperity is your soul prospering. Yeah. He said that's, it's relative to, even as means relative to or in accordance to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we increase according to the truth that gets in us. Yes, increase doesn't come because of the passage of time. It comes because of more truth. Yes, you got to hear that. Yes. Time passing does not make it work. It's the truth that gets in you that makes it work. What does the truth do? It pushes out lies. It pushes out deceptions. It pushes out the common way the common person thinks, uh, which is many times if you found the way most people think, you've just found a lie. Thank you for that, all that feedback. And so you don't recognize lies until you have saturated yourself in the truth. 
not what people say about the word, but what the Bible actually says. And that's when the lies start to reveal themselves. The Bible said over there in uh, Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 11, 12 down and through there, he talks about the uh, sharp two-edged sword. The Word of God is a sharp two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of marrow, and is a revealer, the Hebrew actually, the Greek actually says, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It will bring things to light. It will bring wrong thinking to light. It will reveal it. Why does it want to do that? Why does it reveal it? So that you can skim it off and say, I've been believing wrong, therefore I've been thinking wrong, and that, that, that's a lie that has been keeping me from being free because it's the truth that makes me free. So we want to do that, and, and that process is not always comfortable. Sometimes it's a little bit, you know, uh, and we'll see some people in the Bible that had trouble with it. But anyway, so we'll, we'll get to that. So um, prosperity, you know, it, it doesn't come, this increase doesn't come because of time passing. It comes because of truth getting into someone. Now, I'll just say it another way. Like the Lord said it to me one time, the Lord said, my word, when I was really calling out to God for some answers in this. He said, prosperity doesn't begin when more money in your pocket. It begins when my word finds a home in your heart. Yes, amen. 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 Somebody said, I really needed something else tonight. I needed this or that. Just take the truths we're preaching and apply them to your area. These truths will work for every area of life. So um, the Word of God finding a home in our heart is a process of the renewing of the mind, uh, a process of meditation on the Word until it changes our thinking, changes our believing, changes our whole outlook until where we start seeing things like God sees them. And, when, and that's what it means whenever he said, take my thoughts. Remember Isaiah 55, my thoughts are higher, but he said, my Word comes down so you can have my thoughts. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care much anymore what people think. I really don't care what people think. I love people, but I don't really care what they think. I, what's interesting to me is what God actually said. Amen. You just have to be there, not being nasty with people or anything, but amen. Um, so uh, this, this desire came, uh, originally came from God. The desire that you have for things, or increase, you might say, originally comes from God. Uh, and it, it really still is from God. God still desires this. He's the one that said, this is what I desire. Somebody said, that was John saying that. No, John was inspired. This is inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's writing under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so God is saying that's his desire. And you can see that in many other verses. But um, he just wants us, the issues come up whenever people go, but they, 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 they sort of Boy, I wish I had time. You know, I could take a lot more time than I have tonight. But they, they hear that side of it, yeah. and that's all they hear. Yeah. Yeah. So they think any kind of gain by any means is godly. The Bible yeah. said not. You understand what I'm talking about? Um, there is a way that God does things. And so this desire came from him, and it's still from him. But he just wants you to walk into it his way. Yeah. Because he knows that any other system out there in the world that, has, that, 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 that people could go about obtaining things, it has a lot of sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Proverbs 10, 22. And then the Bible says in Proverbs 1, 32, that the, the, uh, the prosperity of fools will destroy them. There is a prosperity of the world and there is a divine prosperity that comes from God. And to be honest with you, the value system in both of those is diametrically opposed to one another. Amen. And so uh, it's uh, um, the ones, the, 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 what we got to realize, in fact, go over here to 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse number 9, is that, uh, and we're going to just d- d- dive into this tonight. I really don't do a whole lot. You might think so because we, we refer to it in services, but I don't really haven't done a whole lot of teaching and preaching just on the subject of biblical prosperity. Yeah, come on, that's true. That's true. It really is true. That's you think true. about it. Now, we might refer to it quite often, yeah, yeah. but we don't ever do whole services on it. Yeah, yeah. And I just had it in my heart. I I totally was going to go a different direction tonight, but the Lord started talking to me about something, and I believe somebody, God wants to help some people. I'll take some help tonight. (laughs) Uh, So 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 12, 
Now, again, we, we, you know, we're, we're just hitting the high spots of some of this. You could take so much more time than what we're doing, but look at verse number nine. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now, if you read that verse alone without the context, you'll think that anybody that wants to be better off or, or have some things, then he's saying that's wrong. But wait a minute, we already read 3 John 2. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That this is God's desire for us, that we prosper. Amen. Amen. So uh, we got to look at the context and know what he's talking about. Verse 9, they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So he's talking about uh, you know, uh, many foolish and hurtful lusts. We just read, uh, or just referred to Proverbs one thirty-two. He said there, the prosperity of fools, yeah. fools yeah. will destroy them. Yeah. Well, here he mentioned foolishness. They that will be rich fall into temptation and the snare and many foolish, yeah. underline foolish, and hurtful lust. Yeah. So, so lust brings up something that you need to pay attention to, the word lust there. Yeah. Yeah. Foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Uh, that's not what I'm interested in, destruction and perdition. So look at verse number 10, for the love of money. So when he said the desire... The verse number nine, they that will be rich, that's a desire to be, to, to be have a bunch, have more. Yeah, yeah. He said th there, you can qualify what he means there when he says for, look at verse number 10, for the love of money. So now he's qualifying what he means by this desire. Yeah. This goes beyond just wanting to be better off than you are. Yeah. Listen, every parent wants their children to be better off than they are. What's wrong with that? It just has to be kept in, in this area of away from the love of money. And, and unless you know what the Bible says about that, you'll get all confused about that, and you'll get way off into, into poverty doctrines and all kinds of things. So he mentions what it is. The desire, they that desire or will to be rich, or how does it say in verse 9, they that will be rich, then he's qualifying it for the love of money. The love of money is what he's talking about, is the root of all evil. Not money, but the love of it. The love of money is the root of all evil, which, one, which some have coveted. Right there's the word you need to get. Covetousness, underline covetousness, underline lust, underline a loving money, and underline will be rich, because that defines that will be rich. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's not just talking about anybody that wants yeah. to be further ahead. If that's wrong, you're wrong to want your children to be better off than you are. All right. All right. But that's not wrong. That's actually godly. Yes, sir. Amen. The Bible said he'll increase you more and more, you and your children. So your increase will be on one level, but your children will go to another level. The Lord, that's Psalm 115. The Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. So your increase is not done in your generation. And you wanting them to take what you left them and go further is God's plan. Praise God. So don't get all confused about, you know, this thing about desire, just wanting, just that one statement, verse 9. Don't get confused about that. He's talking about the love of money. He's talking about lust. He's talking about covetousness. Uh, look, look at verse number 10. The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith. Look at that. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Covetousness is not faith. They have erred from the faith. Those that are covetous have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Well, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. He has no sorrow with it. This is a different system. This system with sorrow in it is a different system than the faith system. It's the covetous system. It's the world system. So you got to get this in your mind. There's two kingdoms on this earth. There's the kingdom of the world. There's the kingdom of darkness. There's the kingdom of Satan on one side. And there's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light and the, the faith system on the other side. And the two are diametrically opposed to one another. The world is, is at enmity with God and God is, and his word and the, his values and what's important to him is at enmity with the world. Amen. You cannot serve one and the other both at the same time. 
So he's talking about that, and he said, the love of money is the root of all evil. Some have come after they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. What's that? Covetousness, love of money, so forth and so on. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Look at this. Verse, five, verse 12 is in the context of all that he just said. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Somebody said, that's a new birth. Well, why would he tell a man who's already born again to lay hold of yeah. being born again? Right. 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 Timothy's, he's writing to Timothy, and Timothy's already born again. Right. He's not talking about the new birth. Timothy already yeah. laid hold of that. Yeah. He's talking about, the, see, the eternal life is not just eternal, but it's a quality of life. Yeah. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Abundance is a part of eternal life just as much as length of life. And, and, and in other words, quality of life is eternal life just as much as living with God forever is eternal life and guess what he that believeth hath eternal life and that's down here right now that's not just waiting until you go to heaven godliness has promise of the life that now is and of the life that is to come Praise God. So we read that in the context, fight the good fight of faith in the context of this issue of money. And then he said, lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called, has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And then he actually spends some time before he finishes the chapter in chapter 17, charge them that are rich in this world, they be not high-minded, trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So God wants to give you all things richly to enjoy. Yes. Let me, let, me, let me back up. He, he has already given you richly all things to enjoy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we only enter into it as the truth gets into us. Now, so with having said all that, we can see that there are two systems on the earth. There's the covetous system and there's the faith system. If what you are doing, well, let me back up. Let me back up. Um, you have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. That's already happened. But that doesn't mean any person's, any, any born again person who has been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, that doesn't mean the way they think and the way they do things has come out of that system. That, that happens as the mind is renewed. Man, I'm going to have a good time tonight. Uh, the world system and the faith system are both in the earth operating. Amen. And this verse tells us about those two systems, and it also tells how it applies to our financial affairs. This is in context of our financial affairs. We could go to many, many verses that show us the two systems, but for time's sake, we'll leave it at this tonight. Amen. Now listen, if your, if your uh, way of prospering does not require any faith in God, right. in other words, if you can do it all your own, you don't need God, you don't need to feed on His Word, you don't need to do anything He said in His Word, if that's your system of operating, then if that doesn't require any faith in God, and you can do it on your own, then you're still operating in the world system, which has Satan as its head, and he has access to your finances. He has access to your finances anytime he wants. Well, I'm saved. That doesn't matter. It's not a matter of just being saved. It's a matter of doing things God's way. I mean, think about a few verses, Psalm 81, verses uh, 13 through 16. I'll just refer to it. I'll, I won't take time to go there. Psalm 81, 13 through 16. He said, God here is longing. He's, he's expressing his longing. He said, all that my people had walked in my ways. And then he said what he would do. And one of the things down there in the next few verses, I would have fed them with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock would I have satisfied them. Woo! Anybody walking in the finest? Well, then God's not satisfied. <laughs> Amen. He said, it doesn't happen, though, just because, you know, you're my people. He said, it's walking in my ways. 
Then you can read Deuteronomy 28, verse number 9. You remember all the blessings and the cursings of the law? Deuteronomy 28 mentions the blessings. He said, oh, you keep my ways, my statutes. So all these blessings will come on you and overtake you. Bless you'll be in the city. Bless you'll be in the field. Bless, 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 bless. Bless in the country. Bless in the, all you put your hand to will be blessed. You'll be the head not to tell, lend and not borrow. All these things, all, all in the context of financial blessing. And right in the middle of it, in Deuteronomy 28, 9, right in the middle of all that, he said, you'll be a holy people unto me if you'll keep my commandments and, do my, and walk in my ways. So there is a holy way of doing this. Right in the middle of a whole bunch of abundance, you're still holy. Not unholy. Not full of covetousness. Holy, pure, godly. <laughs> Amen. He said, if you do, my, do things my way. He defined holiness right there. Holiness is doing things God's way. Exactly. Amen. Holiness or covetousness, or whichever side, is not a ba bank balance. It is your system of operating. Amen. How many of you know people hear the message of prosperity and they don't hear this side and so they just think any gain is godly. That's The Bible actually says the opposite of that. What's that guy I'm trying to think of? I saw a video. I watched something on him. There was a head drug dealer, kingpin guy. I mean, he just dealt drugs everywhere and he's the big kingpin guy. Uh, and he was loaded financially. That doesn't make him rich. Right, that's right. He died and went to hell. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on. That's right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Shot in a, killed in a raid. Yeah. Pablo Escobar or whatever his name was. <laughs> I forget. But anyway, he had money, but that yeah. wasn't holy. Uh-uh. Yeah, no, no. He got it by destroying families. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Destroying homes. Taking fathers away from, da uh, from, from bo little boys and little girls and mamas away from, and, and, and see, all that's the world. All that's flesh. All that's the lust. All that's covetousness. He, God didn't have anything to do with it. He didn't need to depend on God. He didn't need to depend on anything in the Word to do anything in the Word. He did that all by himself. That's the world system. But don't think just drug dealers are operating in the world system. Sometimes Christians still are in the world system when it comes to the way they do things financially. Well, until we really define it, you don't know what we're talking about, so we'll have to keep on moving here. All right, so two systems, two kingdoms, two ways of doing things. Can you see that? That's pretty plain to me. And so uh, Matthew 6.33, let's go over there. Uh, here's one of his ways. That's all preaches good until you actually look at what is required. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first, first the kingdom. See, now he's talking about priorities. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. The context is what are you going to eat? What are you going to wear? What are you going to drink? All the financial needs, things you need in this life. Amen. Even what you want. All these things will be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, the Amplified says the kingdom of God means his way of doing and being right. Well, well, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness is his way of doing and being right. We, we know how we're made right. It's through the blood of Jesus. But being made right doesn't always equal doing right. Doing right is a result of renewing the mind, crucifying the flesh, learning to think like God, learning to take the Word and say, I'm going to replace my thoughts with His thoughts. And I'm going to take His thoughts and I'm going to say, if I put Him first, if I put spiritual things first, if I put His plan for my life first before my plans, before my thoughts, before my ways of doing things, Anytime I see anything in the Word that's not in line with the way I do things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that, then he said, he will add these things to me. That preaches good, but it doesn't live as easy as it preaches. <laughs> 
Amen. 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 So two ways of doing things, putting money first. You know what I'm talking about? Putting what I want, the desires of my flesh first. Hello? Covetousness, my plans before his plans, or putting his kingdom first. Amen. Doing things his way. Putting spiritual things first, which includes my spiritual development. See, the way God prospers is the way he heals. The way, the, way he, the way everybody's saved. He does it through his word. Yeah, yeah. He does it through his word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you with me tonight? Yes, sir. In other words, he does it through the spirit of man. Yes. Not through his flesh, not through his mind. He prospers man through his spirit. Man, man's spirit. Amen. Amen. In other words, he does it through the, his relationship with God. Yes. Amen. 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 And he does it. When I say he prospers man through the development of his spirit or through a, a, a man's spirit and his relationship with God in his spirit, that includes the word of God, through the word of God getting into his spirit. It also includes the leadings of the Holy Spirit within his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Leadings, following leadings are huge when it comes to financial prosperity. Now those leadings don't always make sense. They'll look like you're going, the, the, following him sometimes, temporarily, listen to that word, temporarily, will make it look like you're going backwards. <laughs> Absolutely. We've seen people struggle with that, working at the daycare. Oh, God's dealing with me, but you know, uh, uh, uh. See, it all preaches good until God starts dealing with you about something. Now, I'm not telling everybody to work at the daycare. I'm I'm, I, and I didn't, we didn't deal with them to work at the daycare. God dealt with them to work at the daycare. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Well, somebody said, you should pay more at the daycare. We pay according to industry. I mean, yes. if we were in uh, computer science or some, some industry that is operating in the millions of dollars, yeah. we'd pay better. Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah. Amen. yeah. And we pay high compared to the rest yeah, of the that's industry. True. Yes, that's sir. true. So yeah. it's not us being cheap. No. Thank you. It's just, it's just uh, what's God saying to you to yeah. do? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Come on. Well, I, I can't afford to do that. Uh, what's more valuable to you? The plan? See, I'm using this illustration, but it could apply to every one of us here tonight in a different way. The plan and God's will is more valuable. And the lessons you're going to learn and then the impartations you're going to get and the, and the development of your faith that you're going to get there is worth to God a whole lot more than money. And whatever you learn there, you can apply it and, and, and use your faith and make up the extra by your faith. If God won't do that for you and make up the extra... I'm talking about if God's yes, dealing sir. with somebody. Yes, God, God might not be dealing with everybody, but if yes. he is, yes. if God doesn't come through and make up the extra, yeah. Yeah. then he lied about it. Uh -huh. come on. Come on. And you can say, God, I'm tearing Matthew 6, 33 out of my Bible because you lied. Come on. Come on, sir. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, he's preaching better than your amen, and that's for sure. <laughs> so God prospers a man through the Spirit, through the leadings of the Spirit, and through the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And listen, he will not. Listen, listen, listen. God, we're going to go ahead and he get, he, you know, the rubber's going to hit the road now. He will not prosper one area at the expense of another area. He will not do it. That's, that's, that, remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. All of them, all of them. Not, not one area, all areas. When you prosper yourself, when you add to yourself by doing your own thing, you will take from one area and steal from one area, maybe your relationship with your children, your relationship with your spouse, or something. Something's going to have a loss in order for you to get what you want over here. Because you don't add to all things, you only add to one area. But he'll add all these things. All these things. Oh, my, I'm going to go ahead and start preaching tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll add all things. 
you will always violate something in your life following your plan. And usually it's God's plan that you violate. Amen. When the devil finds somebody that is willing to put money first or their desires first, then he'll bid high for them. Yeah. Amen. And when you fall for his, 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 you know, op, his proposition to you, the devil just found a sucker. Amen. And you just flunked one of the very first tests of prosperity. That is making decisions based on money. That's the truth about it. People sometimes they, they see where we are and how we're living and they think, well, they just live that way all the time. Listen, there was 15 years yeah. of learning some lessons, some hard lessons, crucifying that flesh. And God told us we were working in, uh, we had, both had jobs in Tulsa and we were uh, working those jobs and we were, we were preparing for the ministry and we were preparing. One of the ways God led us to prepare for the ministry was the, the healing school, the prayer and healing center. And so we were involved there and we kept, and we were loving it there. And, uh, and they gave us a whopping paycheck of a salary every year of zero. <laughs> You're complaining about something small. How about zero? Yeah. Don't think that you're doing something that we don't know anything about. And God kept saying, I want you to pull back on your job and not work there as much and give more time to prayer and healing center. (laughs) Okay. We just kept on obeying. It's funny. You work less, they don't pay as much. And I went to God. I said, God, you're going to have to help me. He said, I said, I'd bless what you put your hand to. I said, well, well, right. I mean, I'm I'm not putting my hand to this over here. He said, I said, I'd bless what you put your hand to. I said, Lord, you're going to have to explain what you're talking about. He said, what am I telling you to put your hand to? I said, healing school. He said, believe me for income through healing school. On staff, what are you talking about? He said, no, just believe that I'd bless what you put your hand to. Now listen, God, I'm just telling how he dealt with me. He'll do it through other ways to different people. Sometimes he'll say, I want you to do this, and then I'll give you a side business over here or, or something. There's other avenues, so don't, don't get locked into one thing. But the point I'm making is, is that I said, all right, Lord, I don't understand all you're saying, but I do know you're saying, believe me for income through me. So I, Debbie and I released our faith for that, and it was as if somebody got up and announced, Pastor Jay and Debbie, we were just Jay and Debbie back then, if they're here, they're giving all this time, and they're, they're, we're not paying them. If you get it on your heart, bless them or something. It was as if somebody made that announcement, but zero people, that announcement was not made. Not made. But it was as if somebody had made it. Because people started walking up to us afterwards and say, here, I just so got so blessed this week, I wanted to give you this. And it got to the place, if we didn't have at least $500 come in a week through healing school, I looked around and wondered what happened. And that was the low amount. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Why did God do that with us that way? I don't know, except for I do know this. Yeah. He knew where we were going. Yeah. He knew with the faith we were going to have to develop to yes. get out there on the road, having no promise yes. of anything. Yeah. 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 Just, just coming to preach, yeah. receive an offering, don't receive it. In some places, didn't yeah. receive an offering. I Come preached on. for nothing, drove all the way to the East Coast, preached yeah. for nothing, and yeah. three weeks later, they sent $20 in the mail. I didn't even pay my gas. No, sir. Not a little bit either. Hello. But see, learning, faith. Yes, yes, faith. In that situation in healing school helped me develop for what was ahead. And to that to God, that was worth more than money. Me having the kind of faith that could step out in obedience whenever I needed to, that's what was really more valuable than than having some money in my pocket. But a lot of people miss that. They don't realize they are where they are. They're just looking at the money. The, the, devil's, the devil's holding some shiny thing in front of them. Money, money, money. Look at you. You don't have any money. You don't have money. He's got you distracted. What are you there for? You're getting something more valuable than money. And if you flunk that test, 
You are done for the call of God in your life until you come down around that mountain and pass that test. Amen. Amen. You're going to go out and add to yourself and increase yourself uh, by doing your own plan, but you're going to exchange the plan of God much more valuable than all the money in the world for something cheap and something less than. Amen. And you will never get the right thinking that makes you safe with abundance. Because you don't know what money's for. You just thought it's for what, whatever desire you have. Money's for the plan. Money's for the plan. Don't ever forget that. That's what money's for. It's for the plan. Uh, I can say some things right now. That's what it's for. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't exchange something that, that has uh, endless value, the plan of God for your life, uh, which, which uh, exchange that for something worthless or something temporary. Amen. So um, you don't give your kids a whole heap of money at the stage they are right now is because they don't know how to do and they don't know how to handle it. Amen. They're going to misuse it. If God, doesn't, if God knows you don't know how to handle it, He can't trust you with it. You thought it was for you. It's for the plan. Amen. Key, Ephesians 2.10, the Amplified, we know we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. That's not just one person. That's just not preachers. That's all of us. God has a path and a plan that He has prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. So what he's saying is he has a plan prepared ahead of time, but the good life is only by yeah. taking those paths. Yes. Yes. He, has a, he has paths for us to take, but the good life is on those paths. The devil will lie to you about that. We don't have any suckers in this room. <laughs> That's right. Some of you didn't say amen, but I saw you were writing, so I... I <laughs> <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. That's where your supply is. Yes. The devil will lie to you, lie to you, lie to you, lie to you. But it is a lie. Yes. He'll say, no, this ne it'll never pay off for me to financially to, to do what God's putting in my heart. That's a lie. You're looking at false evidence. You know the, par the, the passage in Psalm 77. It talks about God leading Israel down to the edge of the Red Sea, verses 14 through 20, especially in the Amplified. It says that God led them down there to the edge of the Red Sea. It looks like they were being led into nothing or defeat or because Israel, I mean, uh, Egypt's coming behind them and just looked like they were trapped. Mountains on both sides, the seas in front of them, Israel behind, I mean, uh, Egypt's behind them, mad as a hornet. All their babies are dead. And so the Bible said God led them there. And it says that he led them there because he had already walked footsteps through the sea and prepared a path before them. But see, they couldn't see it. And history now tells us what that was. Uh, there was, a, a, you know, archaeologists, however, whoever these people are, they discovered where they, they finally discovered, because there's actually a pillar on the other side, Solomon put it up, that, that where they went through, and there was a natural land bridge there where all the rest of the Red Sea is just, just real, real deep. You couldn't have crossed anywhere else. But this natural river had been, you know, pushing silt and sediment out there for generations and, you know, probably millennia. And, and that wasn't near as steep and there was a natural land bridge they could walk across there. God let them, God had already prepared that ahead of time. From the Bible says from the foundation of the world. So it was probably at creation it started pushing all that down in there. Glory. <laughs> but they were led up to the edge of that and they couldn't see that. It looked like God was leading them into a trap. 
Looks like they were being led up to the edge of no, no supply. But uh, the Bible says that, that the way his footsteps were not traceable here in the Amplified, and they led into the sea. So it was under the water. They couldn't see it. Their way would not have been through the water. You know what I'm talking about? Pedestrians prefer ground. <laughs> Isn't that right? That would not have been their choice to go through the sea. But their way, you know, if you've got a way and you, you, you like and prefer a certain way, yeah. let me mark it down, just mark it down right now, God won't use that way. <laughs> He'll use a way you never thought of. He likes faith. He likes you to trust Him. He likes, he likes you to trust Him. Because that keeps you out of your ability and over into uh, tapping into His ability. Praise God. God will do you better than you would ever do yourself. Yes, He will. I'm going to listen to this service myself again. I'm going to enjoy this. Hallelujah. Your way is never His way. You form a way, He's going to jump out of that box. He's going to go a different direction. <laughs> well, I had my life all planned out. It's not going to go the way you planned. I'm not doing anything I planned to do today. I mean, today I'm not doing anything I planned in the past. I don't get these people that get to do their thing. They're doing their own plans rather than God's plans. But that's why they're struggling. Hallelujah. And Hebrews 4.3 says that his plan is waiting on those who believe in the Amplified. It was created from the foundation of the world, but it's waiting. So there's a path that God's chosen for you to go, and that's waiting for you to show up. Show up with your faith. Well, I just, I just can't afford that. Then you can't have what's on that path. Well, I'm going my own way. Okay, you're going to do that alone. Without supply, you're going to be all by yourself. See, people think, well, I'm, I'm tithing. I'm confessing the right things. Why am I struggling? These are all issues. Following God's plan is a big issue. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, let's go over to 16, uh, uh, excuse me, Luke 16. We've got to begin to start to commence to think about wrapping this up. Praise the Lord for the Word. I love being challenged in this area. It just, it just, I, I just constantly, constantly see things I need to make adjustments on in this area. And that's the process of, that we need to go through in order to really walk with God in this area of abundance. Luke 16, look at verse 10. Remember I said there's two systems, two, two kingdoms, each have a way of doing things, and uh, each have a system they operate by. And that applies to our finances in certain ways. Look here in Luke 16. Look and start in verse number 10. Uh, uh, okay, let's look at verse 10 because we'll refer back to it later. Save us some time. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Uh, and the Bible said don't deceive yourself. That's, that's the way you are. I'm not to deceive myself. That's the way I am. If I'm unfaithful in a little bit, I'm unfaithful in bigger things. People are waiting for bigger things, but they're not being faithful with what they have. Then verse 11, therefore, if you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, that's physical, material, substance, and money, and financial things, who will commit to your trust the true riches? That's not financial, material things. That's spiritual things. That's graces, anointings, influence in the body of Christ. That's revelation of the Word of God, and so forth and so on. A lot of faithfulness is proved in natural things before spiritual things are added to people. Non-tithers don't get much in the, in the realm of the anointing or the realm of revelation. Tithers and non-tithers sit in the same service, but they sit in totally different services. Yeah, that just hits some of you. Verse 12, if you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, that would include serving another man in the ministry. That would also include God 
has some things that he said are his. Another man's would include what he says is mine. That, that could be a tithing verse. Who shall commit to or, or give you that which is your own? Well, nobody. Look at verse 13. Now, the context we just read, look at verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold the one and despise the other. You cannot, so underline cannot, serve God and mammon. He's talking about these two systems. He's talking about two, two things that are, have two different values, uh, two, two, two different value systems and so forth. And we'll see that in a minute. Verse 14, and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and derided him. They didn't like that sermon. They criticized the preacher that day. Talking about money. Uh, I don't like that. And it tells us why. That tells me why I was critical of this message for a while. It's not pretty, but it's me. I'm talking about back then. It was just like, ah. why did I get so upset at that kind of preaching? Because of some things were in my heart that had not got washed out yet. And he pinpoints it right here. Don't you love the Bible? It doesn't. It doesn't candy coat it. It doesn't try to make people look better than they are. It's just because they were covetous. The Pharisees who were covetous criticized the sermon that day. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. Now look at this. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Whoa. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. So when he said here, you are they which justify yourselves before men, the Amplified says, you are the ones who declare yourselves just and upright before men, but God knows your hearts. <laughs> How many of you know God looks on the heart? Men look on the outside. God looks on the heart. That's right. Remember we were talking about the big offering? Yep. Yep. And uh, we've got to remind you about something that we really, that God really had us emphasize that day. That is holy. Yes. Yes. Yes, Any man's opinion during that time nope. is unholy. And we're not going to allow it in that offering. That's right. Somebody comes and gives $50. Yep. Come on. And they're 60 years old or something like that. Our opinion means nothing. Exactly. That's right. that, they gave that wholly yes. unto the Lord, and they did it out of their heart. Yes. Come on. Amen. And our opinion is Come to be judged. Exactly. Yes. Come on. Come on. Because that's a holy thing between them and God. We have no opinion about it because we don't see their heart. And they don't stand before us to give account to us. We're not their judge. I want to keep emphasizing that because people are, are maybe dealing with fears about that. Yeah, Listen, yeah. I'm going to say it over and over again. This is a holy, holy thing yes. between a person and God. Right. It has nothing to do with That's other right. people's opinions. Come on. Come on. Amen. And we'll deal, we'll deal very hardly with that if it tries to creep up. Hard. Hard. Because it's very displeasing to the Lord. Amen. Anyway. So... Uh, aren't you glad you came tonight? Yes, sir. Um, notice this phrase. The Amplified goes on to say, King James says, that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. The Amplified says, for what is exalted and highly thought of among men is detestable and abhorrent and abomination in the sight of God. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So notice the previous verse 13. Everybody still here tonight? Yes, sir. Verse 13 talks about these two systems, God and mammon. Mammon is not just money. It's included, but it's, it's, it's the money. It's the love of money system. It's the covetous system. It's not just the, the material substance. It's the whole, the whole spirit, the whole wrong spirit yes. that can be behind it sometimes. Yes. See, money is neither holy nor unholy. It's neither dirty nor clean. It takes on the uh, nature of the person who has it. It's not about money. It's about the spirit behind it. 
you understand there's a there's a spirit of covetousness there's a spirit you know you ever notice that there's something trying to keep money away from you let's just take this for example you charge you put something on your credit card and that thing shows up right away you go for a credit they go oh oh and it'll take a while it'll take a while it'll take a while That's just one example of 300. Uh huh. Now, you, you, get, you get my drift. There's a system out there that doesn't want you to have it. Right? <laughs> Some of you are going, uh huh, uh huh. Listen, you have authority over that system. I'm not trying to preach you into defeat tonight. But, but here's what I'm talking about. That system, that's what he's talking about, God and mammon. He's talking about these two systems. Now, but he noticed then he immediately in verse 16 talks about, or verse, uh, verse 15, he talks about what is highly esteemed in men's eyes and in God's eyes. So those two systems both have things they value. Different values. Each system values something different. Amen. The world values getting ahead financially, even if it has to happen through carnal methods, disobedience to, the, to, to God or His Word. Come on, being unfaithful to the plan of God. Are you still glad you came tonight? That's what they value. That's what they value. They value compromise. Hollywood figures get paid in the multiplied millions. And yet you let a preacher make $100,000 and you got a riot on your hands. Don't shut up now because I just told the truth. <clears throat> That's a spirit. Amen. Amen. Totally different value system. So God values, in God's kingdom, he, has, he values some things too. He values putting him first. He values right living. He values faith. He values his plan. He values obedience to his plan. He values holiness. He values uh, being free from wrong motives and, and things like that. The world doesn't even talk about those things. That's not even a consideration in their mind. They don't want to talk about that. Tell your neighbor, he went ahead and started preaching pretty good. To him and everyone else that has a renewed mind, by the way, faith is worth more than money. It's worth more than money. If you've developed your faith, you can get money. Anywhere you need, anything you need from God. And money can't always buy everything you need. If your, your child is getting ready to have an accident and you don't even know about it, money can't, money can't stop that. That's right. If you're diagnosed, you're out there in the world, and you're diagnosed with a terminal disease, doctors said, we don't have any more hope. There's nothing else we can do. Money can't fix that. Faith can. Faith <laughs> can. Faith can. Faith can keep your child from uh, getting in that accident. You can be sitting at home doing your chores, whatever. Oh, what is it? Shaka Monday, Brishiki. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Tap into that and say, no, you don't, Mr. Devil. And by faith, change that. And you just bought without money. Exactly. Oh, praise God. That's worth a whole, what is that worth? All the money in the world can't give you that. Amen. It, it, oh, my, 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 my. This is just blessing me tonight. I'm just getting blessed. My toes are twitching. I'm so blessed. So, but the things that we flow in, the things of the Spirit and so forth, the world goes, eh. But it's much more valuable than all the money in the world. Praise God. So what, why would you serve something that can't always bail you out? Huh? Amen. 
go ahead and just sell out to God all the way and uh, make his plan your plan glory to God and decide I'm serving God and all these things are going he's going to add all these things not me adding he's going to add all these things to me so now let's just finish up by saying some things we were talking about two, two Wednesday nights ago whatever it was um, because God has a different value system, He doesn't always, or He's not going to always do what's best in the short run for your finances. Y'all hear me out here. Somebody, he's preaching poverty tonight. No, I'm not. He won't always do what's best in the short run for your finances. When He kept dealing with us, to keep working more in healing school, pull back working as much. He wasn't doing what was best in the short run for our finances. You got to get that short run part. I didn't say the long run. Come on, yeah. Brother Hagin used to say it this way. He said, with God, payday might not be every Friday night. But payday always comes. Listen, you want to be there when his payday comes. You're going to get some things money could have never bought favor, open doors, moving into the next phase of God's plan. Praise the Lord. So uh, for in the short run, he's not going to do what's best for your finances. He's going to do what's best for your faith and what's best for his plan for your life. And guess what? We already read all the supply you need is already in that plan. Amen. And uh, if God sets you in a place where you are, then you could get another job at another place that maybe makes more money, but you're missing the point. Yeah. That place is not going to prepare you in spirit for God's, the next part of God's plan. Yes, now, why am I preaching on this? Because I'm on a rescue mission tonight. This is not a service about money. It's a service about rescuing somebody or any of us. Yes from thinking yes. that will get us, that will cost yes. us immeasurably, yes. immeasurable loss. Yes. Amen. 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 So that other place might not prepare you for what God has called you to. And so whenever the time comes for him to take you into the next step, you're not ready. Right. You, you, you hear me? Yes. Hear what this preacher is saying tonight, yes. but hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. And so really, you want to get, maybe get a little relief. But in the long run, you're actually delaying your prosperity. Even though it looks like maybe temporarily you get a little relief financially. Believe me, it'll be temporary. But I need more money now. Okay, learn, learn your faith lessons right now then. Amen. Hallelujah. Find out what he's training you in right now and learn that lesson. Learn that lesson. Learn that. Stop going around that same old mountain. Learn that lesson. I mean, pass that test. Get out of first grade. Get into second grade. Praise God. If you only knew the value of learning those lessons and the wealth that's attached to it, you would never entertain the thought of being unfaithful to God's plan. Because you'd see to it that, that it's too expensive. I mean, you would see that it's too expensive to not learn these lessons. Amen. So he's got your attention on the money, and you need to holler, squirrel! <laughs> Amen. With God, preparation is huge. It's worth, it's worth a whole lot more than the temporary ability to maybe have some nicer things. Yeah. Pastor, you seem like you're preaching poverty tonight. I am preaching what's more valuable than money, and I am preaching how to actually get into something that's not temporary and fleeting and has the door open to the devil. I'm talking to you how to get into something that whenever he does it, no man can keep you from it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's huge. Preparation's huge with God. You need to value it highly. Yeah. Praise God. Don't kick against the pricks when he puts you in a place that's uncomfortable in your flesh. 
Just say, thank you, Jesus. I'm learning what I'm here for. I'm getting what I'm... Every, every, our lives have always been a little bit like a scavenger hunt. God takes us over here to do something, and we don't sometimes know why we're over here, but really we're gathering up things that, we, that he knows we need for the next step. And you just got to trust him in that. And it, it, it's never, some people's lives, it just looks, you know, like they're, they're, they're going one direction one time, another direction. But our lives have always been a flow. One, one, yeah. one phase has been a phase of fulfilling God's plan, but it's also always yeah. prepared us for what's next. Yeah. Amen. Always. always. Amen. Not, if we don't, not if we don't stay put. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He's got to render the lard on us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Go Google it. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants to take you someplace. But he's got to prepare you to get you there. So what's crippling you now will cripple you for the rest of your life if you don't learn these faith lessons. Amen. And it'll hinder your true prosperity. You really want divine. See, we're talking about divine prosperity as opposed to the world's way of pro prosperity. Yes, you can go do whatever the world does and just, just put money first, put God second, or you know, don't even care about Him, nowhere down the totem pole, and just do your thing. Uh -huh. But that's not divine prosperity. Right. Yeah. The Bible talks about that kind, and it says it's very temporary. I mean, it can be taken like that. But I've noticed in God's system, recessions mean nothing. nothing. We actually go further and ahead in recessions. Totally independent of this system. That's a fat cow, skinny cow world out there. And I don't have fat cow, skinny cow. I just go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from increase to increase. Because it is independent of this world system. Can somebody shout amen? I'm just... You can't shout loud enough to shout for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, so-and-so's over here doing this, and they're doing that. Get your eyes off everybody else. Maybe he's not preparing them for what he's preparing you for. Amen. Praise God. So you can't compare to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not preaching lack. We're talking about putting first things first. We're talking about doing things His way. Hallelujah. We're preaching God's system, faith, obedience, regardless of money. Listen, if money's making your decisions for you now, when's that going to stop? When's that going to stop? If you don't break that, and you see, people that are led by money are not led by the Spirit. Or no, and they don't make decisions based on what the Word says. They make decisions based on money. Yes. And that is idolatry. All right, all right. I said, that's idolatry. And that's not a pretty thing. The Bible says covetousness, which is idolatry. Idolatry is having something else in the place that belongs to God only. And you and I don't want any part of that. It'll ruin our lives. And he said there in remember 1 Timothy, he said, it's foolishness. And... Uh, which drowns men in destruction and perdition. It's not a pretty thing. Now, the devil will fla make it flashy for a while and make it look like everything's great. Look at us. Woo, glory to God. I've watched it over and over and over. I've watched it over and over and over again. And one day, he just kind of goes, and pulls the rug out from under him, and the whole thing comes down like a house of cards. And they wonder, how did I get here? Well, the devil waited, let some time pass, so they wouldn't connect it to whenever they switch systems. In their mind, it has nothing to do with whenever they stop obeying God, stop the plan of God. It has not, in their mind, that's the way that he wants to lie to you and deceive you and not let you know that's what it really was. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Brother Seville, Jerry Seville tells a story. I've told it recently again. Oh my, I'm out of time. But he said... Uh, Years ago, he worked for Brother Copeland. He was Brother Copeland's first employee, and Brother Copeland had a salary or whatever he was paying him. And the Lord spoke to Brother Jerry. He said, uh, tell Brother Copeland that you don't want to be paid anymore. He's gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to live by faith. Tell him you're going to live by faith. So uh, I don't know how quickly he, I guess he did it pretty soon. And he said, uh, he said uh, 
Brother Copeland was willing to pay him, but he understood. And so he uh, started believing God. He said so much money started coming in. He said if he'd have known it was going to be that good, he would have done that much earlier. Somebody said, well, I wouldn't be able to do that. Well, then you couldn't get into what things like he's walking in. He was going to, God knew this. Maybe he did or didn't. Brother Jerry Seville maybe didn't know it. But he knew he was going to be eventually traveling in traveling ministry. There was no, no guaranteed salary kind of thing, yeah. at least starting out. Yeah. And uh, he was going to need to develop that kind of faith. Yeah. 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 And God had him ready before he even had him step into it. God will always have you ready. Yes. People that get shocked like, oh, I'm not ready for that. That's because they're not in the spirit. They're walking in the flesh. Well, did you get anything out of the service tonight? Stand up with me. Thank God. Hallelujah. Why do I always struggle about money? You want the answer? That's because that's what you're thinking about. I don't struggle with it anymore because I don't think about it. God says do it. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. What about the money? It'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go look at the bank account? No. No. Come on. Well, what's happening? Are you bouncing checks, writing hot checks? Not for I can't remember the last one. I mean, it's just probably back back when we were first married. Yeah. Come on. What? <laughs> Glory to God. I don't struggle about it because I don't think about it. I'm, I'm plan minded. I'm obedience minded. I'm get the plan done minded. What about the money? It's for the plan. And it's got to show up. I said, it's got to show up. Praise be to God. I said, praise be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pastor, that challenges me. Good. This is what has, this is what has, I love being washed in this, washed in this, washed in this. It just takes my thinking and shakes it. And that's what I, <laughs> in order to get wrong thoughts out, sometimes you just got to shake it. <laughs> Just shake it. Well, I don't know if I want to hear another sermon like that. That just tells me you were shaken. Glory. I want to be shaken. Not stirred, shaken. <laughs> Glory. Praise the Lord. Well, I don't like when ministers talk about money. Why? This really wasn't about money. It was about being plan-minded, being free from covetousness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.